Welcome to Rates of Change. In this lesson I'm learning to solve rates of change problems. Now if I had uh, $20 I could buy 16 ice blocks. Now I want to work out how many ice blocks could I get if I had $15. Well, over here you can see I've drawn a little picture to help me answer this question. At the top I've got lots of uh, circles, they're meant to represent $1 coins. So I've got 20 $1 coins up here, and underneath I've got my 16 um, ice blocks. And you can see that I've lined those up so that they start together and they finish together. Now if you look at the diagram here, you can see that for one, two, three, four, five dollars, you can get four ice blocks. So $5 is equal to 4. And if I go along for another 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, go down here, you can see that for $10 I'm getting 8. I'm sure you're starting to see the pattern, but let's do the last one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'll put a line down through there. So now that's $15 which is the amount that I'm interested in. So for $15 I can get 12 ice blocks and we know that with all $20 I'd get 16. So to answer my question, for $20 I can buy 16 lollipops or ice blocks so for $15 I must be able to buy 12. Now let's see if we can answer that same question again, but this time let's see if there's a way that we can answer it without using any uh, pictures or materials. Well I'm going to start by drawing up a little table here. I'm going to call one column dollars and the other column I'm going to call ice blocks. And I'm start going to start by writing in the information that I know. Well, I know that for $20 I can get 16 ice blocks and I'm trying to find out how much could I get for $15. Now to help me answer this question here, I'm trying to think of a, no, a common factor for, of 20 and 16 and I'm doing that so I can work out how many ice blocks I could get for a smaller amount of money. Now the common factor that I'm going to choose is 4 because 4 goes into 20 and 4 goes into 16. So if I make 20 4 times smaller, so I'm dividing by 4, I'd have just $5. So if I had four times less money, you would imagine that I would get four times less um, ice blocks. So we need to divide this side by four. Dividing by four, 16 divided by four means I would get four ice blocks. So now I know that for $5 I'll get four ice blocks. Now I can use this information to help me work out how many ice blocks I'd get for $15. Well. 15 is three times bigger than five. So I would get so I'm getting so I have three times more money, so I would expect to get three times more ice blocks. Four times three is twelve. Let's just go back to our picture for a second and see how this ties into what we did earlier. Well our first step we divided by four. So let's come back up here and that was where we put all these lines in here so we could work out that we got four ice blocks for five dollars. So that was this first step that we're doing here. Now this blue step that I've done here where I was multiplying by three is the bit up here where we worked out that we weren't interested in just uh, five dollars, we weren't interested in ten, we we're interested in fifteen. So that's why I had to times these $5 by 3, which you can see we've done down here. Let's try another question. Uh, this time, let's imagine that for $18 I can get 6 ice blocks. Now I want to work out how many ice blocks could I get if I had $12.
Now before we use the strategy um, where we tried to find a common factor of 18 and 6, and that strategy would still work here, but there's also another strategy that we can use. This time I'm trying to look for a relationship between these two numbers, so between the 18 and the 6. Well looking at those I can see that 6 is one third of 18. Another way to put it would be 6 times 3 equals 18. So I know that the relationship between 12 and this number has to be the same as 18 and 6. So whatever, well, this number here has to be one third of 12. So now I think to myself, what number times by 3 would equal 12? And I know the answer to that is 4. So if I had $12, I'd be able to buy four ice blocks. Let's try another question. Um, this time, for $15, I can buy six ice blocks. Now I want to work out how many ice blocks could I buy if I had $10. Well, let's start by trying to use the first strategy we, that we looked at. So we're trying to find a common factor of 15 and 6. Well, 3 is a common factor of both, so let's start with that one. We can make 15 three times smaller, so we're imagining we've got three times less money, which would mean we only had $5. And over here, if I make 6 three times smaller, I end up with two ice blocks. So if I know that for $5 I can get two ice blocks, it's not too hard to work out how many I can get for 10 $10 is 2 times bigger than $5, so I would expect to get 2 times as many ice blocks, so I must get 4 ice blocks. Now let's have a look at that question again, but using the second strategy we looked at, so that between strategy. So I'm trying to spot a relationship between these two numbers. And I can express that relationship, or show that relationship, as a fraction. I can write it as 15 sixths. So the 15 here, that's where I got my numerator from, and the 6 here, this is where I got my denominator from. Now let's see if we can change this uh, fraction into a mixed fraction. Well, I know that 6 goes into 15 twice, so I'll have two holes, and then I'll have 3 left over out of the 6. So 15 sixths is the same as 2 and 3 sixths, or we could say, uh, let's write it up here, 2 and a half. So we've just worked out that 15 is 2 and a half times bigger than 6, and I'm going to use this relationship to help me work out uh, how many ice blocks I can get for $10. So I'm thinking to myself, what number made two and a half times bigger will equal 10. Well, I know that four times two and a half equals 10, so for $10, I must be able to get four ice blocks. And if you got a little bit stuck on this step here, this is how I did it. I thought of my, to myself, four groups of two would be eight, and four groups of a half would give me two more holes. So when I put those together, that's how I get the 10. Well, I hope you've found this lesson helpful. For more help, check out teachertools.co.nz.